it's of international importance this it's a, just a little gem you've got the whole of the um, the history of the Scottish textile industry in some crumbling sheds there and it's still working which is the really amazing thing The mill itself is in a really dire state and the machinery, which is the, the really precious stuff, is starting to be damaged by, by the weather. Um, somehow it's still managed to hang together, but it really is, it, 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 we, we need to do something urgently. I mean, the whole point of this place is it's been manufacturing cloth since at least 1784, and we want to carry on in the future. This was largely a blanket mill. Um, that was the m major trade. But also the same yarn that would make good quality blankets. If you twist it up, you know, ply it up, uh, you can knit with it. So you find that um, you can produce blankets, knitting yarn, um, and then tweed as well, tweed, tweed cloths as well. It's the last district mill of its type in Scotland on the mainland. There were mills like this all over, but they went out of operation pro between the two world wars mainly. And this one survived simply because old Duncan kept going. This is the real thing. Remarkably intact. And uh, so therefore I think it's now an opportunity to uh, go forward and say, well, this place can still be here in 50 years. The only uh, similar one is at Bridge End on, on Isla, but otherwise it's, there's really, um, we are told, there's just no more in the world left like this that's still working um, and working on the original machinery that, that have been bought. So, so we not only need to keep it going, but we need to train people to, to use the machinery and maintain it. If, if we are to succeed in what we do, we have to be able to pay our way. This place needs to work. It, can't, it won't survive as a museum, something static, where machines don't actually do anything. They're just there to look at and be talked about. I can see probably seven, eight people in all employed here. The plan is to run it as a community business, which means that the local people will have a stake in, in how well it does. It will really give a sense of purpose to the to Nakando, which is quite a scattered rural parish in northeast Scotland. And what we'd like to do is to involve school children. There's such a real variety of stuff that there that they could get interested, right from designing cloth to the sort of technology of how these machines work. You can see in the mill, you've got a very early um, instance of a computer there, um, the chains which actually regulate the patterns. Um, I, I think just looking at the, from the historical point of view, um, how their own ancestors have developed over the years. Um, and also we are going to be using renewable energy. We want to restore the water wheel and use that to produce some energy for heating the place. We're also thinking of putting in a biomass boiler and also um, a new hydropower system in the burn. We think that altogether all the things that we need to do here, or we would like to do here, which include having some facilities for visitors, because we, we really want people to come here and enjoy the heritage, and there are no facilities here for visitors at all, is going to cost about two and a half million pounds, which is a lot of money, but it's really well worth um, spending on s such a little industrial jewel here that you, you'd never notice, would you? <laughs> you would go past without seeing it.